right. Good evening, everyone, on yet another wonderful New England weather day, making us thankful that we are here online, I'm sure, as opposed to on campus. Um, did anybody have school today? <laughs> I'm doubtful. I had a class on campus last night and everyone was getting their phone calls and their notifications during class. So we we're waiting to see who is going to be the last one to find out that they didn't have school today. All right. So um, we're back on sort of a normal schedule. Um, hopefully over the next several weeks. Um, I wanted to start off this evening by just kind of doing a little bit of a recap of um, where we've come from, what we've covered so far, and a little bit of a heads up on where we head next um, in terms of the next few weeks of the class, sort of leading up to the central spring break. So, but before we get to that, um, I just always want to start off, does anybody, did anybody have uh, questions about uh, the work from last week? The topic was um, segmenting and pre-training uh, from the chapter in the book, and then um, kind of taking those concepts into consideration to do a continuation of the design phase of the Addy design for your Moodles. Um, so were there, are there questions, concerns, comments at this point about that work from last week, um, or really anything that we've, uh, dealt with so far? Um, yeah, I was wondering, is this, is this Moodle supposed to be asynchronous and synchronous together or? You know, uh, what were you expecting on that end? It is um, I, the 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 primary focus would be asynchronous, but um, you know, as as we've seen using the Moodle for this class, you can use it synchronously to an extent. Um, so if you have some activities that that you want to build with the idea that they would be done in real time with your students, um, that's fine. Uh, but generally, the the main focus of a of a platform like Moodle is the is the asynchronous side of things. Okay, thanks. So sure. All right, that's a great question. Anyone else have questions? Yes, Melissa. Professor Miller? Yes. Um just really quick the um all of us in the class, you know, the peers and everything, we're replying on each other's um, plans and such, and we can take a peek at each other's, which I think is absolutely fabulous. And I so much appreciate when um, my peers, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times they say nice things, but I actually even more appreciate when they give advice because that helps. I was wondering if there is at any point in time prior to like when the project is due, if we will get feedback from you on what you think, what's, you know, how things look kind of a thing? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, that I'll probably start uh, providing that sort of a feedback over the next few weeks. Um, these The first few weeks, and this actually kind of ties into what I was going to uh, talk about just sort of in terms of where we've been and where we're headed, um, is that so far the, the main focus has been about just kind of the nuts and bolts of Moodle as a structure. Um, as a piece of software. So most of our focus has been on understanding how to essentially program Moodle, what its options are, what it offers, how to structure things. In our instructional design, it's been mainly about the, the big picture structure of it. Um, over the next several weeks, the, the focus is now going to um, start to become on the content that goes into the Moodle. Um, so as we start filling that in um, and as things start taking shape, then I will be um, providing more regular feedback on on where uh, where the Moodles look like if they if I'm seeing things um, that I might have suggestions for and so on. So I kind of wanted to let them begin to take shape and to let you get your ideas settled. Some people are still 
um, reworking what their their main idea is for it. So I wanted to kind of let it let it get off the ground a little bit. But um, what I will start doing is is providing feedback um, as uh, as we start adding content in and starting to really see them take shape. And plus, uh, not directly from me, but it'll be partly me as well, but um, a week or so before the Moodles are done will be one of the weeks where we meet on campus. And that's what I'm calling our beta testing week. And that'll be a week for us to all be in the same room and be able to kind of go around to each other's Moodles and, and take them for test runs. Um, and that'll give you a chance also to get some, some in-person feedback and to actually see people uh, you know, make use of the Moodles and see if they have any uh, final suggestions as we start to finish them up. So, um, yeah, so hopefully that, that answers your question. But, um, yes, I will definitely be starting to take a look at them um, from a more critical standpoint now that we start to, uh, we're going to be starting to add some content in. One last question about the feedback that you provide. Um, how will that be conveyed? Will that be via some type of technology or in class when we meet on that beta week or um no you'll you'll get that feedback earlier than that 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 beta week will be pretty near the end of the process um so what i will probably be doing with my feedback is is providing that to you individually um probably via email um just so that the the communication is just between the two of us um or some means like that, but yeah, that that'll be. It, we won't be waiting until that that beta week for you to hear things from me. Thank you very much. Yep, um, Professor Miller. Yes, uh, I just had one question going off of what Melissa said. Yep, about, uh, people giving feedback, and um, in terms of each of us giving each other feedback on our on our own Moodles. Yes, are we supposed to enroll in each other's classes just to see? what everyone's doing and give people um, feedback on those sorts of things? Um, I would, I, you can if you wish. I, I At this point in the game, I don't know that that, uh, unless I sort of specifically request that, what I try to do is set up, at least at the at, so far, the things you've been responding to have been things that have been in the forums on Moodle um, so that they're sort of in a centralized location. Um, I, I would say when, you know, again, just to give people a chance to kind of figure things out and get a fair amount of it in place, um, you know, eventually I might be asking people, maybe not everybody to sign up for everybody's, but for us to do, you know, maybe in small groups to have people uh, enroll in each other's Moodles and uh, take a look at them from that uh, perspective. Um, but at least at the moment, I, you, I mean, I guess it's entirely up to you. They're, they are open to the, you know, to anyone in the class. Um, but since people are in, in different phases and different stages of things, um, at this point, at least, I'm not going to officially ask people to be going directly to the student Moodles and commenting on them there. All right. Thank you. Yep. All right. Other questions? All right. So as I said, you know, the, the in terms of the framework of the class, um, where I sort of see us right now is that we've pretty much made it through the majority of the technology of Moodle. Um, I did mention over the last couple of weeks that the grading aspect of it we will touch base with in a few weeks, um, probably the week after we come back from Central Spring Break, and we're talking about assessment. Um, but beyond that, the majority of, of the rest of the functioning of Moodle, I think we've, we've pretty well covered at this point. So folks should feel pretty comfortable um, knowing how to, how to structure things, what types of activities and um, uh, resources are available. Um, and we've basically at this point gotten through the A and the D of the ADDI instructional design. So we, we did our analysis and um, we've been working on the design phase of it and getting the, the Moodle structured. So the next four weeks, and well, really five or so weeks, um, but the four weeks leading up to the spring break, um, my focus each week is going to be on one aspect of 
content, sort of one class of content that can be added. Um, this week, the main focus is going to be on uh, graphics, educational, instructional graphics, so graphic design. Um, we're going to talk about something called the Gestalt Principle uh, of Design. Um, then next week's main focus is going to be about uh, video and animation and talking about some things there. The following week will be about audio. Um, we'll be looking, for those of you who have, haven't checked it out, a program called Audacity and some basic audio uh, things. And then the final week before the spring break, we'll talk about uh, Web 2.0 basically incorporating uh, other companies' web products into your website uh, and making use of those resources. So over the next four weeks, it's there's it's gonna each week is gonna have its its own things, but for the most part, we'll be talking about some sort of uh, general design principles or things to be aware of with a particular type of media for the first part of class. And then the second part of class will be about looking at some specific technologies that will help you um, create that particular kind of media. Um, so we'll spend the first part of today's class talking about graphic design and doing some analysis of some instructional uh, graphics. And then the last part of class, I'm going to show you a few uh, online resources for creating graphics uh, if you don't have something um, of your own that you like to use. Um, so that's going to basically be what we're what we're about over the course of the next four weeks is now starting to fill in the content um, on the Moodle by looking at these sort of four different types of content. Um, before I go any further, I, it has been pointed out to me, and I I need to go back and maybe just republish the syllabus. Um, my email address. There's a bit of confusion around it, and I apologize for that. Um, when I was creating the syllabuses, um, the email address that I had through Central was a student address, which is the at my.ccsu.edu. Um, when they hired me as faculty, they automatically sort of re uh, rolled that account out and switched me over to the ones that are just at ccsu.edu. So, um, if you're trying to get in touch with me with me uh, touch with me by email and and I'll post this on the Moodle too, um, the address is millerd at ccsu.edu, um, not the my.ccsu.edu. So I apologize if some of you have tried to get in touch with me via the the email on the syllabus. Um, I think that the email through the university and everywhere else is correct. Um, it's it's just it was in that one place I think that I had the other one still posted. So I apologize for that, and um, I will, like I said, I will try to take care of that. All right, so before we get to Gestalt, um, the other thing that I wanted to start off with tonight related to the Moodle project is just to, now that our Moodle projects are starting to take shape and I'm starting to get more questions about the overall scope of the project, um, I did want to finally go over the, the requirements for the project. Um, which I do have posted on the Moodle, but I will go over them here as well. So um, I, people have brought up questions over the last few weeks. Um, I obviously, the part of this, this class is things that, uh, that I inherited and are, and are continuing on from when Dr. Sponder taught the class. Um, I have made some adjustments. Um, so some of the Moodles, if you're looking at previous ones, there are some things that might have been requirements, which I might have a, a slightly different view on, um, and I may have added some things that were not part of previous Moodle projects. Um, so the, the sheet that I've made available has uh, the required items and then the, the actual scoring rubric that I'll use on it so you can see the kinds of things I'm looking for. Um, bottom line with all of this, as much as possible, as I've said before, is that it's really about realizing a, a solid educational instructional design. So everything ties back to that. So a lot of times my answer is about maybe a specific of how many do we need of this or do I need to have five of these or one of these. 
Um, from my perspective, it really is about what is going to support the instructional design the best. So I tend to not have a lot of requirements that are like, you need to have this many of this and this many of this. Um, they tend to be more guidelines. So, But in terms of required items, and some of these we've already taken care of, in that header section of your Moodle, you should obviously have the, the name for the Moodle or the topic or the unit or whatever you're considering what you're teaching. Um, your name and a, and a photo of you, I'd ask you to, to put uh, something like that in one of the first couple of weeks just so that uh, you can personalize your Moodle a bit for your students and they get a bit of an idea of who you are. Um, eventually, when all of our instructional design paperwork is done, and I've been spreading that out over several of these forum uh, assignments, we'll gather all of that stuff together into one document, and you will be placing that instructional design document on your Moodle. Obviously, typically, if this was an actual Moodle for students, you wouldn't be putting that document there, but um, for the purposes of this, just so that I can find those completed uh, documents easily. And uh, and then a syllabus for your unit slash topic slash whatever you're calling it. Um, I'll go over some more details about what the syllabus should contain. Should contain, um, but the syllabus isn't really a design document. That's more of a re reflection of your policies for the class and and so on. So that'll be something that we add um, probably after the the central spring break week. Um, so that's in the header section. Each of the content sections, and here I say, you know, as many content sections as you need to uh, support your design, but I'm saying use 8 to 10 as a rough guideline. So if, if your Moodle boils down to simply two sections, then the scope of that maybe needs to be expanded just a little bit. On the other hand, if you find yourself getting up into the 15 to 20 sections, um, then that may mean that the, the subject that you're approaching uh, needs to be simplified a bit. Um, but I'm not going to require a specific number, again, as long as your instructional design is, is realized. So use that 8 to 10 as a rough guideline, but certainly it can go to either side of that if needed. Um, each section will contain a page containing the learning objectives for that section. Um, and a short um, video or audio describing the content and activities for the section. And we'll get into those, you know, those are not things you should be creating yet. We'll be talking about video next week, audio the week after. Um, but think of that as, you know, if you had a sub or somebody that had to um, present this material or somehow go over this material with students, it would just be your way of, of giving them a brief overview of what each section is going to cover. Um, and then beyond that, it's whatever activities and resources you need to complete the objectives for that section. Um, and then for each one, and, and this will be when we get to doing assessment, um, some sort of a short evaluation activity for each section. And that can be as simple as a quick exit slip, a single question poll, a, a short quiz, nothing too formal or too in-depth, really just a quick get a sense of whether the students got what they should have gotten. And then we will be creating the final Moodle section for your Moodle will be some sort of a unit evaluation. Um, think of it as a, as a summative um, assessment for the entire unit or topic of your Moodle. Um, but again, we will get to that section and, and the subject for that uh, when we talk about assessment. So beyond that, you know, even you'll notice even with activities and resources and so on, I'm, I'm not going to necessarily require you to use X number of activities or put in five videos and three instructional graphics. Um, that is really going to be up to you um, when it comes down to how much you need. Um, so that's why our, our design phase and um, analysis phase has been so important. Um, the rubric, you know, in terms of the rubric, it's mainly about the indicators, one indicator for the required items, which are the things that are listed up above. So I'll be simply making sure those items are there. Um, your instructional design plan, um, which again, we've been chipping away at that in pieces. We'll assemble all of that information together into one document. Um, segmentation, which is basically about the structure of your Moodle. 
Um, how, you know, what sort of evidence is there that you've thought through how to divide up the material into ways that uh, support student learning and make it easier for your students to process what's going on. Um, there are two indicators for internal and external resources and activities. Internal would be things within the Moodle environment. So if you're using a Moodle activity like their database or a forum or something, um, that would fall under that indicator. External resources would be if you're linking to other websites, to other internet resources, to Web 2.0 uh, apps, um, anything like that that you, that you bring in. Um, and then the last indicator is just about the assessments, which will be the, the little assessments at the end of each uh, content section, and then the, the big evaluation assessment at the end of the, the unit. Um, so that's really what I'm going to be looking for um, in terms of requirements, in terms of guidelines for where we're headed. Um, we still have, I don't know calendar calendar wise, but we, we're still a good at least month and a half or so, uh, if not more, away from when these things will be finished. So it's, you know, we'll be chipping away at this a little at a time. But now that they are underway, um, wanted to make sure you had kind of a vision of where it was going to end up um, as we start to add content in. Uh, so any any questions on the requirements for the Moodles at this point? Oh, that's OK, Erica, go ahead. Um, for homework this week, we were supposed to write uh, a description of each section as a page. I didn't get to finish doing that, but I just wanted to make sure I'm doing it correctly. That's just like a short summary of what the section is going to be about. Yeah, and that's eventually that will that page will get either augmented or replaced by the page that would contain the learning objectives in that short little introductory video. Okay. At that this makes yeah, at this point, I just wanted you to have a way to just quickly sketch your idea, of, mainly for your own thought process of what you're throwing into this section. Um, so, all right. All right, anyone else have questions about the Moodle? Yes. Oh, yes, go ahead, Brian. Um, I was just wondering, and the section where it says for the learning objectives for each section, and there's also going to be a short one-minute video or audio. Yes. What will that audio contain? Will that just take, contain the learning objectives just in a video form? Basically, yeah. I mean, it would it would be – think of it kind of like an advanced organizer for that section. Um, if you have people that, that like to, to read – then having the, that information there is just listing out the learning objectives, but um, it'll also be a way for you to provide a, you know, an alternate means for people to kind of get a sense and overview. So it's, they're gonna be short, you know, it says under one minute, it's really just, you know, welcome to this section, uh, you know, in this class or in this section, we are going to learn about such and such. Um, so yeah, it's, it's based, basically just supporting the learning objectives. It's not going to be any of the content for the section, just, you know, what the section is going to cover. All right. And that's going to be for each section, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's why they're brief. I don't want to bog people down in having to create, you know, 10, 15 minute videos. These are just going to be short introductory um, audio or video, just sort of giving the student an overview of what it is they're about to do. Right, and that'll be that'll address um, people who are need audio, learn through audio, and then others who learn through reading through the typing it, out those objectives. Exactly, yeah, and you know, in, in the the other class I'm teaching right now, the 520, we've talked about the personalization principle. So, you know, if you have a way of creating a quick little video with an animated agent, you know, that can be a way to also kind of grab your viewers' interest. Um, you know, something along those lines. All right, thank you. Yep. Okay. All right, well, let's, uh, let's move on to the real subject for tonight, which is 
graphic design. And I'm a little nervous because I know we have at least one art teacher in the room. And I hope that uh, everything that I say um, makes sense. Um, but um, basically where I'd what I'd like to start off with is uh, just laying a little bit of groundwork or maybe a framework as if you're creating graphics. So tonight the topic is about images that don't move. So it can be a chart, it can be a graphic, it can be an image, it can be you know anything that you might use to support instruction that is a that is a still visual example. Um, we are obviously as humans very visual learners. We we process things visually in some pretty unique ways. And um, so one of the things, the concept that I mainly wanted to use to pin tonight's class together is this Gestalt theory. Um, so uh, what I did is I, I pulled together, there's a, there is a document here, and I, it may be too, I don't know how easily you folks will be able to see it, um, but you can also always go directly to the Moodle and open up your own copy of it. We're gonna sort of take a look at this together. What I did was I pulled a bunch of different resources that I found together. So for instance, on this introductory page, this is actually three different articles or four different articles, introductions to the Gestalt theory or Gestalt principles related to graphic design. Um, and I just, I wanted to provide all of them because they each have slightly different things to say. The one in the middle column is really, was specifically geared towards instructional graphics. Um, the one on the right was an article that was more about um, typography and general design. So I, you know, I, I didn't want to just pick one or the other. So I, I pulled all three of them together here. Um, so I think, I guess that maybe the best way to start this is to give you folks a, a, just a few minutes um, to just take a look over this introductory page. Um, and like I said, you, I, I, you know, I don't know if you can actually read it off of mine. I'm not sure you can even see the whole page. But um, if you want to take a couple minutes, you can stay here in the room, but, but uh, bop over to the Moodle and open up your own copy of it and just look at the first page. When it goes past the first page, then it's gonna start getting into the laws that we're gonna be looking at. Um, so take, uh, I don't know what this will take. It's 5.30, let's say by, um, by 5.40, just that everyone is back in here and we'll just talk about um, the Gestalt idea and what it means and maybe how it might apply to um, creating graphics for education, some things to think about. So, so let's take, take 10 minutes at most, um, uh, 5.40 to be back um, and just read over this, just the first page of this uh, handout. I will leave, I can leave most of it on the screen if you can see it, um, but if not, like I said, you can also look it up directly on the Moodle and take a look at that. So I'll see folks back here in the room at 540.